Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is, despite what people might say, a pretty complex game with a lot of technical skill involved in becoming a high-level speedrunner or time trialer. And if you've been following this channel for over the past few months, you'll likely know that I live for the minutia and tend to go really far into the weeds when discussing mechanics and strategies for how to improve at the game. In this video, I want to do something a bit different and provide a useful resource for people who aren't as proficient at the game yet. Maybe you just got the game within the last couple months, or you've been playing casually for a while and you want to start making a more concerted effort to improve at the game. Whatever the case may be, in this video, I'm going to provide you with some useful advice that will immediately take your game to the next level. We're going to be covering things like good beginner builds, tips for learning how to drive faster, and some basic principles of item management. So if you want to start destroying your friends, make sure to watch till the end because we're about to cover 10 tips and tricks that you need to know to get started playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. With all that out of the way, let's dive right on in. Number 1. The In-Game Info Menu The first thing you should do if you're new to the series, or even if you're just new to this game, is to go down to this little information menu on the bottom of the starting screen. Most people that I've talked to aren't even aware that this exists, but it's easily the most helpful resource out there if you're just getting started. Now, in the Info Menu, you'll find three subsections. In the Driving Techniques page, it tells you everything you need to know to learn how to start playing the game including how to get the startup boost, how to drift and build up levels of mini turbo, and how to trick off ramps. Next, you'll find the items page, which perhaps unsurprisingly explains what all the items in the game do. One thing it doesn't really mention is that the super horn, and yes, it's a horn, not a music box, can actually be used to destroy pretty much any projectile coming your way. And that includes fireballs and the dreaded blue shell. The last page you'll find in the info section is a battle page that explains the rules of each of the game's battle modes not particularly useful for our purposes. So yeah, before doing anything else, I highly recommend that you check out the in-game info menu. It's easily one of the most helpful resources out there for new players. Number two, pick a decent build. All right, let me preface this by saying, pick whatever build you wanna use for whatever reason you want. But if you're looking for a good starting build, I suggest a build with a decent balance of speed and acceleration, but maybe with a slightly higher emphasis on acceleration rather than speed. This is because when you get hit by items, which is definitely going to happen when you're doing Grand Prix or online races, it's super frustrating to have a low acceleration build because it will take you forever to get moving again. And it just doesn't feel particularly satisfying to play this way. You can check the stats of your build by pressing the plus button on the build screen. And a decent beginner build is any one of Link, Yoshi, Daisy, Rosalina, Waluigi, Roy, or DK with standard bike, rollers, and parachute. Swap out the standard bike for Wild Wiggler if you want the same stats but a little bit less awkward drifting, or Biddy Bug your Mr. Scooty if you want slightly higher acceleration. For 200cc, if you're not that experienced, I recommend holding off until you've unlocked Biddy Bug your Mr. Scooty, and then using a lighter character like Yoshi or even one of the baby characters. 200cc is ridiculously fast, and the extra handling of the lighter characters will help you massively in terms of being able to stay on the track. Note that you won't start with Biddy Buggy, Wiggler, or Mr. Scooty, and you have to actually unlock them. The way that you unlock new carts, tires, and gliders is by grabbing coins, either in single player races, battles, time trials, or online. The order that you unlock things is totally random, but once you've collected 3100 coins, you'll have unlocked everything in the game. That is, of course, except for Gold Glider, which requires 5000 coins, but Gold Glider is not that good anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Number 3. Do at least one run of every cup on 150cc. Okay, I promise that's a lot less obnoxious than it sounds. If you're just starting out and 150cc is a bit too much, you can always start at 50cc or 100cc and work your way up. That's what I did anyways. But ultimately, after going into the info menu and getting a handle on the fundamentals, you really want to get some experience putting those skills to the test. And what better way to test yourself than on the most competitive gameplay mode which is 150cc. Don't be afraid to experiment here and just start trying to drift around every turn you see no matter how shallow or tight. Don't worry at all about playing optimally or trying to replicate some sick nasty videos you've seen online. The goal here is just to get a feel for the controls and see how each of the tracks plays. Now let's move on to some tips that specifically focus on improving your driving ability. Number 4. Learn how to drift. Drifting and building mini turbos is one of the most important things to learn in the entire game. I've got an entire video on this topic, link in the description, so I won't spend too much time on it here, but the important bits are that if you press R or ZR along with the direction, you'll start drifting, and while you're drifting, you'll be charging mini turbos. 
The speed at which you build up mini turbos depends on the angle at which you're holding the joystick. If you're not doing anything with the joystick, your mini turbos will charge pretty slowly. But if you think of your joystick like a clock face, then anywhere between about a 2 and a 4 for right drifts or a 10 and an 8 for left drifts will cause you to build up mini turbos more than twice as fast compared to the neutral drift angle where you're not doing anything with the joystick. Now that's all you really need to know to get started racing against the computers, but if you're looking to practice first, you can open up battle mode, go into Dragon Palace, and just mess around in the wide open area until you've got a decent handle on doing left drifts and right drifts. If you really want to get some practice, you can try doing figure eights around the outside of the statues, but this is probably overkill, since the best way to learn how to drift better is by just playing the game. Number 5. Grab those coins. There's a bajillion videos and articles out there that tell you that coins make you go faster in the game. I mean, I've even got a whole video dedicated to the topic myself. Again, link in the description. Long story short, each coin you get increases your speed by half a percent, and you can hold a maximum of 10 coins for a total of a 5% increase in speed. This might not sound like much, but considering that most tracks take about 2 minutes or so to finish on 150cc, you're going to be saving yourself 6 to 8 seconds on average over the course of a full race, which really is a huge difference. Coins come from three sources. First, every track in the game has a way to get coins on the track itself. Most of the time, it'll be in the form of actual coins that are on the track. But on the F-Zero tracks, which is Mute City and Big Blue, you'll get coins by driving over these blue and pink paths on the ground. The second way to get coins is from the coin item, which increases your coin count by two. The third way is to pick them up off somebody else who either just got hit by an item or by a track hazard. But yeah, I can't stress enough how important it is to keep your coin count as high as possible at all times. Number six, take turns as tightly as you can. There's gonna be a few exceptions to this rule, but the basic idea here is that you wanna be taking turns as close to the track barriers as you possibly can. Let's hop into GBA Mario Circuit for a bit and just look at the first two turns. We're going to put two replays side by side, the left side taking wide lines and the right side taking tight lines. You can see that by the time we've made it to the orange boost ramp, we've saved more than a full second on just the first two turns without doing anything super advanced. Most of the time, just knowing that you want to take tight lines is enough to figure out how to play most of the tracks at least decently well. After figuring out how to drift, this one principle is probably the single most important thing to focus on if you're trying to improve at the game. Number 7. Learn how to manage your items properly. Item management is one of the most complex topics in the entire game, and I could never hope to do it justice in a video like this, but if you're just starting out, the main idea is to focus on playing defensively. Trust me, it's exponentially harder to claw your way out of the middle of the pack than it is to just not get there in the first place. So what do I mean by playing defensively, and how can you get better at playing defensively? First, note that green shells, red shells, bananas, and bombs can all be dragged behind your cart by holding down the item button. If an opponent throws something like a green shell or a red shell at you, and it hits your defensive item while you're dragging it behind you, it'll destroy your item, but leave you unscathed. Note that for bombs, you actually need to drop it by releasing the item button just before you get hit. Otherwise, the blast radius of the bomb will also hit you, causing you to spin out. Now you generally want to make sure to have at least one of the defensive items I listed above in one of your two item slots as often as possible. So how do you do this? Well, it's important to point out that if you're in first place and you've only got a coin, then 9 times out of 10, you do not want to use it right away. This is because the game is programmed in such a way that you're not supposed to be able to have two coins at the same time in online races. So if you've got a coin, just hold on to it until you grab your next item box and you'll be more or less guaranteed to get a defensive item. So to quickly summarize my beginner-friendly item management tips, always try to have at least one defensive item on hand. If you're in first, do this by not using up any coins you might have until you've already picked up another item. And if you're not in first, it should happen more or less automatically. Then, drag your defensive items behind you to protect yourself from enemy projectiles. Like I said, item management is way more complicated than that, and I'm going to make an entire video dedicated to the topic at some point in the near future. But the main idea here is to try not to be overly aggressive with your items because you will get wrecked. Number 9. Do the time trials. Okay, full disclosure, I absolutely love time trialing. In fact, I actually prefer it to racing against other people. There's almost something meditative about grinding out a single track over and over again to try and eke out every last tenth of a second you possibly can. That being said, I'm fully aware of the fact that the vast majority of people cannot stand time trialing. 
and that's totally fine. But even though I've left this tip until really late in the video, if you ask me, the single most effective way to improve at the game is through time trials. The reason is that the better you get at each individual track, the better you'll get at the game overall. I definitely understand that running a track by yourself over and over again might not be the most appealing thing in the world to a lot of you, but that's why I recommend keeping things interesting by setting goals for yourself. You can start off by racing against the staff ghosts on each course, and at a bare minimum, I suggest practicing each course until you can beat its respective staff ghost consistently. I actually don't recommend watching those ghosts though because they tend not to be very good and they use strats that are really suboptimal. I've actually put a playlist together, again, link in the description, that will show you how to beat every staff ghost in the game without using any mushrooms or any advanced strategies whatsoever, just clean driving and tight lines. They're not fully fleshed out tutorials like my basic training series, but hopefully they're at least a good place to start. If you really want to challenge yourself, try beating all the staff ghosts yourself without using any mushrooms. I guarantee you, it is possible, and I'd even go so far as to say that it's a lot easier than it sounds. Number 10. Practice, practice, practice. If you followed along so far, then you're pretty much good to go. Go back and try getting three stars in every cup on 150cc if you haven't already done that. Keep running time trials until you're able to beat all the staff ghosts without mushrooms and you're able to get within 7 to 10 seconds of the world record on every track in the game. Hop online and put your skills to the test against other racers. Actually, for that last one, I suggest that you do worldwides and not regionals just because the odds of getting a balanced lobby are a lot better in worldwides. Also, try not to be intimidated because people who play online are not going to all be crazy tryhards like me. Most online racers are just casual players of the game looking to have a good time. Now, no matter what you decide to do though, if you want to get better at the game, the most important thing to do is just keep playing. And that's going to be it for me for today, everyone. I hope that you found the video useful and informative. I put together in-depth weekly time trial tutorials for every track in the game, along with deep dive videos like this one about once a month. So if you enjoy that type of content, let me know down in the comment section below, and also consider becoming a subscriber so that you can stay up to date with all my latest content. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you all in the next one.